Hello, this is Angela with Park Coast Permaculture. I am sitting in the front yard food forest of my Portland, Oregon permaculture garden. I wanted to make this video several minutes ago and uh, there's just a lot of ambient uh, urban noise this evening, including my neighbor was warming up their diesel truck and it was just so loud I couldn't film. But that's okay, I took the opportunity to just sit here on my five gallon bucket that I use as my chair when I'm filming in the garden. And I observed what wildlife was hopping around me, right? What wildlife was making use of this space that um, has been created for both myself and for them. And I noticed that the garden right now is really full of a lot of bumblebees and a lot of the really teeny tiny serotina bees. They are really small and black and they look kind of like a flying ant, but they're actually a bee in the carpenter bee family and a great pollinator. So if you are in this part of the country and you're seeing those around right now, know that those are little teeny tiny beneficial solitary bees and a welcome visitor in the garden. I also noticed that it's getting to be the time of year where there are a lot more spiders, which is great because it's also the time of the year where we get a lot more flies, uh, particularly in the chicken run. And I am all about encouraging the natural predators. So I'm excited that I'm seeing more and more spider webs, more and more orb weavers around. They're gonna help take care of the fly issue. I also noticed that there are a lot of songbirds right now, particularly goldfinches and uh, house finches. And still, there are a lot of young uh, fledgling scrub jays in my yard, which do a great job alerting everybody in the neighborhood to the presence of cats. So now that my neighbor has pulled out, it's a little bit quieter hopefully for a moment till the next city bus comes by. Let's talk about food forests. Now I have a little tiny one. It sits between my house and the street. It's a very small space. My entire yard, including the footprint of my house, including my driveway, our whole property is only one quarter acre. And I don't have very much space. If you've watched my channel before, you'll know that I have more than 40 fruit and nut trees and just, I have lost count of the berry bushes grow thousands and thousands of pounds of food here. Not all of my garden qualifies as food forest or forest garden. In the backyard, I have a rain garden, I have a sun trap annual veggie patch, and I have more of a traditional uh, orchard setup that rings the perimeter of the property. And the reason that's more of a traditional orchard setup is because I keep my ducks and chickens and bees in there, and that prohibits me from establishing more of a food forest dynamic. Eventually, maybe I will figure out a different system and I will get more gilding going on in that part of the garden. But up here in the front yard, it is all food forest. So a food forest is when you use the way nature creates the layers of a forest or woodland and you harness those um, strategies and those growth habits to grow edible plants. It can be everything from blueberries to pumpkins to fruit trees to nut trees. The potential is really vast and um, food foresting or forest gardening is a strategy that gets poo-pooed a lot by more traditional agriculture folks. Even folks with a really ecological bent, even folks who really care about growing food to feed a hungry world. I think that the reason that forest gardening seems idealistic to some people and seems more uh, myth than practicality is because it does feel so serene and it does feel like an oasis it does feel like an eden right you are living in a garden that looks like a lush forest with a canopy layer and an understory layer and shrub layer and ground covers and vines and root layers and 
all of those layers are producing food and medicine and fiber and bringing in all of the wildlife, pollinators, predators, you name it. Seems like a fantasy, doesn't it? It seems too good to be true. So I think when we are really indoctrinated with and grow up with the model of post-World War II industrial agriculture as our standard, a food forest can seem really disconcerting. It can seem like a beautiful fantasy or it can seem like just complete and utter nonsense. Mark Shepard in his book, Restoration Agriculture, does a really good job breaking down the myth that food forests are not as productive and restoration agriculture methods based around tree crops are not as productive as monoculture, uh, corn or soy production. So I won't do that here. I will link to his book. It is one of my favorite pieces of regenerative agriculture literature from a farmer with decades of experience in regenerative food production that has to be profitable at the same time he makes his living as a farmer. So I won't rehash all of that here, but you can check it out in his book. So I wanna talk about some corners of my garden right now and the amount of food and value and diversity of food that I get out of my garden. So when the criticism comes up that, that forest gardens are just kind of a, a beautiful fantasy, a um, you know, a cottage garden dream. They really aren't. They really can produce thousands and thousands of pounds of food in a very small space. It does take adjusting our dietary expectations. It does take some planning around harvest and food preservations. It does take recognizing that the current um, mechanical means of harvesting crops in straight rows with monoculture don't work in a food forest setting, but hopefully some smart engineers can design machinery to more efficiently harvest because being in a food forest can be a little bit labor intensive. Anytime we have to hand harvest our crops, it's a little bit labor intensive. Um, but that's okay because for me part of the harvesting pattern is checking on the overall health and structure of my food forest and also my pure enjoyment being in the garden so for me i don't mind the extra time input if that labor produces multiple kinds of yields for me a yield of um, peace and um, serenity from being out in my garden, recentering, resetting myself, a yield obviously of the food that I am picking, a yield of chop and dropping and adding biomass, a yield of uh, giving me the opportunity to tweak my design and improve it. So for me, harvesting produce, I gain lots of benefits in one fell swoop, but it is labor intensive. So one of the benefits of a food forest is that instead of getting a single crop per year where you have put all your eggs in one basket, a food forest is diverse with dozens and dozens of species and cultivars that all can produce a yield of food, fiber, medicine. They all produce at different times of the year, which spreads that labor of harvest out and enables us those periods of rest and time to process our harvest. It also means that we have not put all our eggs in one basket. We have diversified and that makes us more resilient. I have pawpaws if my pawpaws struggle this year. I also have persimmons if my persimmons struggle this year. I also have late apples. So I have a backup to my backup. If everything produces in full abundance, then I have more than enough to share around. If some elements of my garden struggle in a given year, for example, this year I talked about how some of my blueberries got quite a bit of sunburn and I lost probably 50% of my blueberry harvest in our extreme heat wave earlier in the year. But my June berries in Saskatoons did incredibly well despite the scorching sun and I got a bumper crop of them. So even if something does poorly in one year, I am not gonna go hungry because I have built a resilient system with backups to my backups.
So one of the criticisms or gotchas that can come up when folks oppose the notion of food forest gardening because it's just too beautiful to be true is that you just don't get as much of a yield out of any one plant. It's shady. Right now I'm sitting under a peach tree and a pawpaw tree and they produce quite a bit of shade. And so the criticism is your plants are shaded. They're producing less than they would out in a more traditional um, post-World War II agricultural setting. For example, maybe my winter squash here won't set as many fruits because they're not in full blazing sun. Mark Shepard did a good job breaking this down in restoration agriculture, and I'll just touch on it briefly here. My own personal experience has been that while some crops are going to produce smaller yields or the individual fruits will be smaller because there is more shade. My overall harvest is much larger because I have diversified and I have created a rich system of dozens and dozens of food crops. So while this one pumpkin vine may give me two pumpkins instead of in a full sun aspect in the backyard, I might get four or five off of it. That's okay because I'm not relying just on my pumpkins. And next to them, I am growing American groundnut and I am growing pawpaw and I am growing fijoas and I am growing June berries and I am growing horseradish and I'm growing rhubarb. So while each single element may produce a slightly smaller yield than a much more highly manicured and industrial system, the overall production off the land is larger and more diverse and therefore of more value to me as a home gardener. Earlier today, my 13-year-old and I were out in our 13-year-old food forest picking berries for him to make jam. I think it can be difficult to grasp the full scope and diversity of a food forest unless you are out walking in one. Here you can see Verbena bonariensis in full bloom. All of the food plants are surrounded by support species. Here this Fijoa has just set fruit, which I hope will be ripe by October. One of the added benefits of having a food forest for me is that it promotes an intimate connection and relationship between the gardener or farmer and her landscape and the plants growing within. It may seem like a chaotic jumble of green living things, but it's actually a carefully planned design. When I spoke earlier about the multiplicity of crops and how they're layered in together, here you can see my peach tree and underneath French sorrel is thriving. Now the food forest may seem sunnier than one would expect and that is because earlier in the summer I pollarded my main canopy tree to let more light in in order to help some of my plants mature more quickly and also to provide nitrogen rich chop and drop mulch for this part of the garden. I'm still able to grow a lot of sun-loving annual veggies in this part of the garden because I use the force of disturbance through chop and drop, through cutting back my larger trees to allow more sunlight to filter in. That keeps my food forest more dynamic and pushing toward abundance. Utilizing every layer of the food forest from root layer to ground cover layer to shrub layer, using herbaceous and woody perennials, using sub canopy and canopy level trees, allows me to cram a ton of food into a very, very small space. The productivity is so much more than a monoculture garden of the same size. For me, this little snapshot of a pawpaw tree that has a goji berry growing up through it, being visited by bees, is such a perfect little encapsulation of the potential of a food forest. Such diversity, so much benefit to the gardener and to wildlife. One thing that's important to remember is that permaculture is site-specific design. So a criticism that comes up is that we can't use food forest gardening as a one size fits all solution to world hunger. And I think that's a perfectly valid criticism. In permaculture, we want to hone our design to fit the land and to fit the needs of the people on it. 
So a food forest isn't gonna work for every setting. It's not gonna work for growing cereal crops. It's not gonna work for um, pasturing certain kinds of livestock. But it does work for certain settings to produce huge quantities of food in a sustainable, regenerative way. While monoculture is slowly reducing the fertility of the soil year after year, increasing the pollution year after year, a food forest is sequestering carbon, increasing fertility, and increasing the yields year after year. So what we're having is an incline toward abundance, while monoculture industrial food production is on a decline. And I think that's something that's really important to remember when we're looking at long-term sustainability and feeding people is that using food forest design in communities where individuals, families, small communities want to seek to increase their food security, especially over time, increase community resilience, food forests can be a really good option, especially because you can grow so much more food in a small area than one family can consume. For example, I often produce two to 300 pounds of quince a year. I can't eat that much quince on my own, but I can process it into a product I could sell and add additional income for my family or I can share it with the community. I could swap it with somebody who grows a crop that I don't, perhaps Asian pears, which I don't grow on my property, but I really love. So when we're looking at the benefits of food forest gardening, it's okay to say this is not a one size fits all approach. This is not a type of gardening that or food production that works in every setting for every person or every community. Can it increase the overall resiliency of people in communities all over the world? Yes. Can it increase the individual resiliency of nuclear families? Absolutely. Can it diversify the diet of the average American family? Oh heck yes it can. And thereby increasing the health of the average American family. Let's keep in mind that all of these good things are happening, growing food, healing the planet, while creating a beautiful, idyllic um, oasis that may seem too good to be true, but is something that the average family could produce and can enjoy the benefit from, all while adding wildlife habitat, shade, cooling and ever warming planet sequestering carbon, producing food, but daggone also producing a tremendous amount of enjoyment in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, tremendous amount of beauty and richness that they can add to our lives all while feeding us at the same time. So let's remember that forest gardening is a useful strategy to keep in our toolbox of permaculture design when we are looking at creating a multiplicity of ways to feed people and heal the planet. If you are interested in learning more about permaculture gardens, forest gardening, and sustainable food production, you can check out some of my earlier videos. I have a playlist on permaculture fruit and also a playlist for this summer 2021 that are both probably really useful and relevant to the subject of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my Patreon in the description. When you support this channel, you help support me and my four children and you help me make it possible to create more and more videos for all of y'all. Hope you are enjoying your summer. I'll be back tomorrow.